Good evening. Welcome to the November 30th meeting of the Public Safety Building Committee. This meeting is being recorded for cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. We are, <coughs> excuse me, we are missing our advisors from Dunham and Sweeney who are stuck in traffic and they will join us when they get here. So we can. Is anyone from D3 going to be here at all? Probably not. They, they said that they were not going to be able to make it. But then Rob said he was going to try and clear his schedule, and he didn't get back to me. So I told him that it was rather important that they were here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so why don't we um, go ahead and skip to approving the minutes. Do you have copies of it? He usually do. <laughs> I didn't make copies. I just have my original. Okay. That's all right. I read them Sorry. on the computer. I don't have them with me, though. So did anybody have any... Um, Amendments to the October 26th um, minutes. Uh, approved. So a motion. Here, so. Okay. I'll second the motion to approve them as written. Second. Yep. Um, all in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. And one abstention. Two. Two abstentions. That's right. You weren't here also. <coughs> okay. The minutes from the ninth. I had only a little bit of cleanup stuff. I think Zell is one L, not two. Uh, his nickname is <coughs> Zell with two L's. His oh, name is, he got lots of other consonants. Yeah, I thought he signed his docs, <laughs> his, his emails with one L. I, I don't, it's not critical. At least for me, it may be for him. But, um, and then in that same paragraph, the second line from the bottom, third line from the bottom, it says provide sprinkle. So I think you mean sprinklers? Yep. Just very minor change. Anybody have any other changes? Motion to accept these minutes as amended. So moved. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 And I think no abstentions. <coughs> OK, third, we um, did get an invoice from Dunham and Sweeney. Put on hold. Fifteen thousand. What? Fifteen thousand. So that's the kickoff space needs site analysis. Their meetings with the chiefs. These plans. Does it, does it look like it's as per agreement? Truthfully, I don't know, and I, I didn't compare it to the agreement. Perhaps I should have. Does anybody want to see it? It out says it's 50,000. Is this the first invoice from them we've received? Yes. yes. Site analysis at 75%. Yeah, it's already been. T they, they got the site analysis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they got the. Yeah. Well, we're paying for the site review. Yeah. We're paying Webby for that. Yeah. We do not have a bill from him yet. So you want to pass it on down? Uh, it, was, it was up to 7000 for Webby, not to exceed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so he, he he's had something from what Webby in his hands for a while? I actually think they got it either this morning or yesterday afternoon. Or they got part of it yesterday afternoon. How can we be at 75%? Site analysis. Oh, uh, three things. <coughs> space needs and site analysis. Yeah, space needs as well. Kickoff. That was all under that line. Oh, okay. okay. But sure. To me, it doesn't really matter how they apportion the line those lines. Just it doesn't go over the. Well, that's why I just want to make sure they're paying all of it for something. Yeah. Well, that's finished. it. You can right. Finish, but they're not, they're not asking for. Yeah. Exactly. I'm out by that. Okay, so a uh, motion to recommend this to the Board of Selectmen for payment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, we can just go ahead and start talking um, about any other changes we... About the survey first? We could, but we don't... Do you had a chance to look at it? Yeah. Okay, I... Thank you, Bob. Oh. All right. First question is, have we 
get the land now. No. Any movement on that? No. The last I heard was that um, she was waiting to get a clear deed. You know, the, as far as I know, the property went back and forth within the family several times, and it just could be that she needs to get people to sign off. I, you know, I, I reach out to her, and I have to wait until she is willing to talk to me. The, um, I mean, the draft of the survey I mean, really kind of shrinks uh, working space as to what we have to do then. I mean, that coin comes a lot further than that. Is this something we pursue? So let's say we start building the police station. Is that, is that, that Webby's drawing there? Yeah, I think the land, regardless of what even if we don't build a fire station there, you know, we move the basketball courts up, we, Boy, that's really who knows, it's, it's yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. No, which is, no, is, uh, is it has no effect. useful for the town long term. Yeah. And it has no bearing on the police station, is that correct? Well, no. One bit, I would, yes and no. Uh, I, I don't shape and access? Yeah, I mean, you kind of want to, kind of want to have an idea of where you're putting grand plan is and you can have a grand plan but then I think if the land isn't there when you if you're coming up with a finalized plan to lay out the police station you're gonna probably have to do a little more work on making sure that any alternate possibilities will not be hampered by how are you bring in the police station which means that it may get tucked a little one way or another more so than you would if you could play with that whole space for this time. I would guess. Well, so we're not there yet, but it affects where we put the <clears throat> cistern for the sprinkler system because that would serve a potential fire station. So, we've got a couple, a couple of points, but it's not a, not a possible hurdle. It just seems. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not a hurdle. Sure. Yeah. Some of the documents I've seen, it seemed like it was more about yeah. right here. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I guess that, that is a question comparing it against the products that were done before. We should mm -hmm. be able to do that. Yeah. It's it helpful to be able to do that to yeah. tell us whether we are got a smaller space. Mm -hmm. Some of these is the committee completely sure. against the basement? Well, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm pretty time in favor of it because I, I think it ends up shrinking the overall. We, we can shrink, you can get almost a thousand feet out of this thing. I agree. Yeah. You are in favor of it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, a basement is, plus, plus we, we, the septic system and everything is all your new wiring. Could, once well, you put a slab okay. down, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think the amount of work that we, is required to go into a slab type construction is everything has to be done before the slab is poured. And everyone I've talked to, you guys know as well as I do, the plumbers have to be the electricians, everybody has to do their work prior to yeah. the And the there. other thing, the basement gives, it, if down the road they, they want a fitness center, they can yes. put it down there. We, and we can eliminate it from upstairs. That's a big hunk of change. I'd like to steer the um, architect in the general direction, in, in the direction that. We don't really want to go slide construction unless we absolutely have to because of the site. But, I, mean, but I think that there is a limited amount of things based on what they're telling us that you can put down there because if you put certain things down there, then you have to do an elevator, at which point well, no any public. of the savings is gone. Yeah, no, I mean, no public. No public no, assets. Public. No, public. No, public. Public. no, no public. even, public. even, even have a, like, let's say we have a dead record storage down there. The yeah. administrative assistant has to be able to get down there. It shouldn't assessment. have to. What happens so, if she gets sued? So you can put a chairlift down there. I don't think we can legally do that. Put a chairlift down from a one floor to the second floor? The exterior walkout, too. I mean, that does so fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we we that's, have it here now. Yeah. I just want to confirm that with. Yeah, but it would have to be a, it would have to be a ground level exterior yeah. walkout. Mm -hmm. So well, it's not the slope of the way this land is. You know, I, I think there's, that way. Yeah. there's the potential. I mean, it could be, yeah. I mean, it could you, be very easily a walkout, especially the way that this corner is seen. You know, it seems like it, the, it, it drops off fast enough on that hill yeah. that you you could put a, an alleyway in there. And that has to do with a lot 
a lot of that has to do with how the station is actually orientated. This is it orientated um, with the front being here versus the front of the station uh, actually being in that direction. You know, that's yeah. pretty up the side of the building. And then it's going to face the street. Because yeah. I was looking at, like, you could put the... Uh, the evidence room down there, storage. You could put the dead uh, storage down there, the electrical room, the boiler they, room. They, they, I mean, yeah, I mean, they said last time and the time before that that you, you, you're going to be limited as to what you could do down there. And also, even the thing we have to remember is they said just because you take off a thousand square feet doesn't mean you save a thousand square feet worth of cost. Right. In fact, the other costs start to go up. And, and so you, your square footage cost Yeah, but that. downstairs basement is not going to, it's going to cost you $400 a foot. I'm not saying that. I'm saying some of the other costs. This is, this is just what I heard from the prior meetings. You know, so I, I, I think it's fine to explore that. I think it's yeah. a good idea to explore that. I mean, you should explore all the options. Yeah. I just, I don't think it's going to be a um, holy grail. It's not a one-for-one -one swap. No, no, I don't expect it. It's not going to be a one-for-one -one swap. But it can get you out of your sprinkler system. No, it can't. No. Not from the last it's, meeting. It's no, no. Any police station will go so in sprinkler Because it's we have cells, cells huh? it's con because we have detention cells, it's considered an institutional use, which automatically triggers a sprinkler requirement. At 400 for the square whole feet. And, unless we put the cells in a separate building, we're, yeah. we've, we've accepted the sprinkler system. And we discussed what, at the last meeting, using one tank to serve both the police station yeah. and a future fire station. So we've cut the cost of you know, two sprinkler systems down to the cost of like one and a half. But it's still gonna cost. It's still gonna cost. We, we're pretty much guaranteed to have two sprinkler system. So I think one of the things here, and I think there is a bit of sticker shock, which is understandable, but I think one thing we do need to sort of think through is that when you look at the, at the study that was done before, it didn't suggest that we were going to build a police station for a million dollars. It didn't say anything close to that. And whether we want to say that was grossed up or not, who knows what went on with that. That study is what it is. The question is whether the million, million five that's been thrown around was ever a realistic number. And if you know, you're listening to the architect and you're listening to the consultant suggest to us that it isn't, then the number is going to be bigger than, than I guess we were thinking of, which is why the number went from a million to possibly 1.75 million, which is why we sort of said we need to take a step back and make sure that we understand what the costs are before we go to put it on a warrant. Yeah, one, one thing I'd like to touch on, John, and, and I agree, I think where we got the million and a half was with a mod space and it was around 5,800 square feet. I have the, the drawing here. And their estimates were, I think they ranged from $176 a square foot to, I'm going to say two and a quarter, if memory serves me correctly, yeah. in that range anyway. So we multiplied uh, 5,800 or 6,000 times a, a number yep. uh, and came up with one and a half million. So I think that's where we came up with it. Well, and now all of a sudden we're looking at 400 to $450 a square foot. Um, and, and I'd like to, and before the meeting started, you touched on something, John. And when you said something about 2.4 million um, and then it's going to cost, then, then you have to outfit the station after that. Um, well, you have to do the site, the site work, work and, and you this, know, this, this is a building. Th there's a lot beyond yeah. the building yeah. itself. Um, and, and I, you know, took a look at, at what Collins and um, the capital stabilization account, where it is. It, in my mind, you, you could use about $300,000 a year out of capital stabilization without bankrupting it. Um, and so do the math, it, it's, uh, again, 13 months ago we went through this exercise and we had FinCom in here and town accountant and it was 90, the, the cost to the town to borrow uh, from our bank was $95,000 per million per year on a 20 year note. Um, and so if you do the math, you know, 3 million is 285,000 
out of the 300 that there's there's your number um, and that's without anything else that's that's a police station at about 6,000 square feet and, and and the rest of the uh, you know the attendant uh, site work and and so they're not eating I mean working off of cat tables and folding chairs uh, there's a lot that has to go into the building beyond just four walls and a roof so I, th I think it's important um, because right now tax rates over eighteen dollars a thousand um, if you kicked in a four million four nine four million dollar police station um, you're going to be looking at another, roughly another dollar ten dollar twenty a thousand uh, which brings it up to 19 and change and then with just the normal growth in town you're going to throw another 75 cents on it bang you're at twenty dollars a thousand just like John Henry said 13 months ago you're there and that's just in one year so that's what, no, and even if you do a debt exclusion and things like that, that's going to add to the tax rate. So, I think we need to, we need to think in terms of, you know, John and I might like a red Ferrari to race, you know, at Le Mans, but, <laughs> but it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's true, but I also think that we need to, I think that's absolutely true, and we have to think about that. And I don't think it has ever been the thought that we would do that exclusion for this. Um, but then we also have to make sure that we have a station that that not only makes the change things right now, but in the future. So I think the, you know, I didn't. The, I think there was an attachment, but it didn't come through in the email for the revised plan. All I see are the three. Was, was there? A, was there, was there, there was a revised plan. Yeah. yeah. They have a single so, Yeah, all, all I got was and it's only down to eight thousand. So something must have been so, bumped out. You know, I think we're, we're going to have to. It's got to. It's got to. I tried to send that twice. Then it's got to be smaller. Yeah, I mean, I'm, we we might like to have some things, but they may they may not be practical to keep the thing down at that within cost. Um, you know, not not that you're trying to make everybody work out of a, a tiny spec cramped space, but there's got to be some things that we're going to have to give up to get it down to, in my mind, somewhere around six thousand to make all of the numbers work. I don't think by looking at what is drawn out here, what the chief has said are kind of absolutes, what stuff he's been willing to cut. I really don't see us getting below. 75, 7,200 that easily, I think we're... Well, I think, look, you know, and this isn't going to be popular with some people, but I'm going to say it. The fitness room can go. That's I'm saying. 100%. At 8,000, that gets us to 7,600. Well, I think we're, there's another one floating around that, what's Colleen got okay. here? That's the newest one. That's the newest the one. The, the deputy chief is gone. Says 8,000. Um, Good evening. I think. That's a wet out there. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I think if we're looking at, okay, we're looking at this plan. I suggest, and, and you weren't here with for mod space. I've got mod spaces here. That was 5,800. Um, and so I suggest that we take a look at maybe a mod space. And, and I know the chief had, had looked at that. It didn't include a fitness room. Um, but something along that idea, um, maybe we take care of that. This is just one person's, one, one company's rendering. And we have another one that was smaller and, and apparently seemed to do the same thing with less square feet. So, you know, so basically, there's still suffering. Mm -hmm. 
can be reduced. So I apologize, obviously we're uh, midway through the discussion, I imagine. Uh, but as you, I think, have already received, uh, this plan is 8,000 square feet. It reflects the changes that we made at the last meeting. Also, um, discussion with the police chief about making some additional uh, changes, which include uh, the el elimination of the conference room, sort of combining it with the training room. And uh, that helped us eliminate some extra circulation we didn't need. Um, and then we also eliminated some space in the detention area by uh, eliminating one of the cells. Good question for you, Jeff. Sure. Roughly, how big would you say the garage and the sally port are in terms of square footage? Because that's in this 8,000 number, isn't it? Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you take out the garage and sally port, mm -hmm. and they were not in the so. Don't okay. The garage and the sally port were not what on the space. Uh, the sally port was. Uh, uh, yeah, probably probably 600 square feet you know what, for the, left the sally port and uh, maybe it's 38 by 27 or something. The garage? <laughs> sally port. Oh. And the garage is like uh, 14 by 14 by 14 by 18. So maybe eight, maybe nine hundred square yeah, feet, so something like that like combined. Between seven and hundred and a thousand square feet. Oh yeah, definitely between there somewhere. Yeah. So, um, you know, the car was that was that Sally Port on the? The Sally Port was on there. The garage was not on mod space. The uh, the mod space design was basically a rectangle. No, no drugs, and then the Sally Port was just add, added on uh, the outside. Uh, I apologize. I thought I brought the mod space plan uh, here tonight. I left it on my desk, so I, I don't have it with me. But that was <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Small. Yep. Yeah, and, and as you can see, there's a Sally Port. Yeah, the chief has a has a large larger color one. I know that what we're trying to do is perhaps reduce the size, but I'm a little concerned. Oh, he's gone. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little concerned about um, taking away the cell. Uh, well, we did talk to him about that specifically, uh, the chief, and he was very comfortable okay with, it. with it. Very comfortable with it. So or, I know, would 50 trust years his. From now, it's, it's still. Mm -hmm. I would trust his judgment as to what the <laughs> town's needs would be. I mean, it, it, as we've discussed in this committee, the population increase, yeah. very minimal. Um, the, the type of crime the that's happening that would require cells unlikely to change drastically in the next. No. What are we gaining? Yeah. About 50 people a year? Well, I, I think the, the, the planning council projections were for. 3,500 uh, up from our present, maybe 2,800. Right. And that's over okay, 50 years. Of, that was a long time yeah. out. So I don't necessarily think that the, there's a demand for three necessarily. Yeah, that, that plan there for mod space is 6,519 square feet, including the South Port. What we were discussing before you guys got here was the difference between full basement and slab. Oh, add, adding a basement to it? Yeah, so, and how much, I mean, what can we put down there? We're discussing about the shape of the lot. You know, what do we have to make um, accessible? As 
Jeff, have you seen the site plans that came in this afternoon? Yes. Yeah, they sent them to us as well at the same time. Yeah. So we, we just took a look at them. We'll print them. And them it looks like us. we're the, where that corner is by the town hall and it starts to go to the long jog. That corner looks in a little further than we. Yeah, a lot further, further than I was anticipating. Yeah. So uh, it looks like we're almost going to be kind of forced into that hill. Yep. Which may work to an advantage for a walkout mm -hmm. basement. Right. Um, you know, if, that's, if the topography is such that you would have had to put a fairly deep foundation on the building anyways, just putting a slab down there and accessing it for whatever, especially if it's walkout, is ideal because you'd save on the cost of an elevator as long as it's storage space and it's yeah. not space you would really need to access on a daily basis. In other words, in the wintertime, people don't have to go around outside the building to get yeah. down below then I'd say it's a it's a benefit. Whether or not we can do a one-for-one -one trade, for instance, uh, every square foot we save on the first floor, we can add it to the basement. In other words, not increase the total built area of the building. I'm not sure that that, uh, we'd have to do a, a more careful analysis to determine if that would be possible. My gut reaction is it might not be, but at least the part that would be deep enough for the walkout part for the basement might be sufficient to put a certain amount of program in there and then the remainder of it could be uh, could be slab on grade where the hill is a little bit higher. Um, but we do want to make sure that whatever we put down there does not need to be accessed by the department on a regular basis. So well, you, you know, can't put the detention down there. No. Well, you could put, put your mechanicals down there. But you could potentially put the mechanical systems down there, right? Dead uh, storage. So dead storage, exactly. Okay. In the garage. Uh, eh, I would be hesitant on that. Just, just. I mean, you can. That's a, that's a big. But driveway. it is used for police operations and. The garage. Yes. Yeah. Isn't the garage more for storage? No, that's the truck. They'd have them. They'd, they'd have their motor motor motorcycle. By the right, but they'd have their motorcycle in there. They'd have other. The cars that they use the motorcycle. Not very often. That would be um, once a month, maybe ATV, probably less. I mean, my thought is they're going to have to. It depends on the park. Yeah, it depends on the park. I I would be in favor of putting the garage space underneath, if it if it worked out that way. Yeah. The topography. Yeah, the, um, and I, I don't necessarily have an objection to it. I just want to stick by my earlier comments. Anything that's critical that operate on a regular basis, we should make sure is on the first floor. Everything else can go down. If it makes you feel any better, I said that too. We yeah. said it so many times. <laughs> we are hearing it. Great, great. We haven't fully got it into our heads yet. That's our okay. hearing. Step by step. It would be an improvement because right now the garage is a Connex box in the parking lot. Correct. So yeah. From a yeah. from a usage standpoint, I don't think it will change. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if topography-wise we're forced into it, it's a at least it's a good way to handle that challenge. And it would also break up a big wall of make the exposure. building smaller footprint-wise, and make exactly like you said the the expansive facade that would be facing the street would be Broken. shorter as well, um, which would help. That's and you'd probably end up with more storage. Yeah. Right. Then you would not otherwise get in this. Less yeah. future use. Future storage, yeah, whatever. Would it happen? Would it be difficult to see a condition of that in the next meeting? Well, um, you know, basically, now that we have the survey, or at least, you know, at, at, uh, uh, in the initial pass of the survey, we can start doing what we had intended to do, which is start with the site layout and figuring out topography wise how this building is going to fit on the site. So, yes. That's exactly what we want to do next, is to kind of confirm this old scheme, how it would fit on the site on a one-story building, but also, depending on where it goes, potentially have to do a two-story option as well. So the only intent about the front of the wall, you know, versus uh, what we were just discussing versus this, I mean, potentially yeah, that's right. Yeah, depend if it's a long, skinny site, you may not have room for parking and then entry to the building. You might have to park alongside the building, enter from one, you know, the left side of the building. It just changes the way that everything's organized in the building, which is one of the reasons why we were hesitant to go so far with the plan without actually having the site information because it was potentially going to lead to some redo of, of the work. So 
have you had a chance to actually review the site plan? We got it just like got literally it. a half an hour before we left the office, <laughs> yes. to sit in traffic. And uh, there's a, there are some things that we've talked to uh, you know, about asking the surveyor to provide, and we're not entirely sure that they're finished doing their research yeah, and getting the data. There's definitely so, data. So it sounds like it's still a work in progress, and we've just got an, uh, yeah, as, yeah. as complete as possible draft. Said draft on it. I just. Yeah. yeah. Chief, how do you feel about having a garage down underneath? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I'd support a garage anywhere around. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that we, uh, we talked a little bit. Uh, I talked, I've spoken with a couple of residents in the last few weeks, and what they've impressed upon me is that if the cost of this gets out of control, they're not going to support this building. And um, it really appealed to me to get it as small as possible. So that's that's what we need to do. Uh, I need a new building, uh, and we need to be able to have the taxpayers support it at town meeting. So I, I think we, as the advisors and the committee, need to come up with a plan that's going to give us an adequate police station and uh, give us a uh, police station that we're going to be able to convince our residents that, that we can need and can afford. Yeah, but it has to be adequate for you guys now and for the expected life time of the building. Yes. Before we are push, oh, we're pushing down a renovation to the building in 25 years, which is going to be even more expensive per square foot than it is now. So, I mean, I, I think we need to certainly be as frugal as possible here. We need to not cut out stuff that that is needed because the price is going to be to some extent what the price is, and then we have to see if we can afford it. So that's uh, the problem. Are there any fire safety or air quality concerns with putting a garage under the basement, a, under the building? No. Get a fireproof to see. Yeah, there, there's going to be certain code requirements no matter where you put the garage anywhere, whether it's yeah. in the first floor or the basement. Could you put a firewall be between the cells and the and the rest of the building, and just sprinkle that section? We talked to the plumbing engineer about that yeah. he, before he came to the meeting last time. Could we yeah. literally break the building in two? Yeah. And sprinkle one, and he didn't think it was going to be feasible to do that under the code. You, you literally would have to separate the buildings into two separate structures, which would cost more money because essentially the oh, structures yeah, would have to be two independently. Two walls, yeah. Right. Um, and two independent structure, structural systems. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, one building would have to be able to burn to the ground while the other one stood in place. <laughs> and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to build a little building like that. Yeah. Um, because but that's essentially you could, what you'd you have could to do. negotiate those cells so that you could not really isolate them completely off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you could use a 2,000 gallon tank in a basement. Right. That would be the only way to do it is to, is to take the I and R use out of the whole building. Yeah. building envelope somehow. And the only way to do that is to make it its own separate building. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like it's a worthwhile. No. And he won't buy a firewall, huh? Yeah. What's yeah. that? He won't buy a firewall. No, it, it, it has to be literally a. Well, I mean, a yeah. firewall is essentially the same thing, but it would yeah. literally a separate building in that sense. Because um, I know it. Well, yeah, I mean, it would be separate construction. So yeah. whatever means and methods we'd have to do to, to do yeah. that it would be through the whole building. Well. So basically we want to see if we can um, put in the basement, mm -hmm. if we can shrink the building a little more. A lot more. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and we should discuss square footages of spaces if we're actually shrinking space. In other words, if we're, if we're trying to reduce the overall building size, we have to start to talk about reducing the program some fashion mm -hmm. to get there. So the right. question is what spaces are up for reduction in size and 
And, and do you eliminate any more program? I mean, it's, because I, I mean, I just glanced at this mod space plan that you were referring mm -hmm. to, and the men's and women's locker rooms are tiny, both of them. Mm -hmm. They're so, also the same I mean, size. They're both the same size, but they're also small, even, even without, I mean, regardless of how many occupants, I'm, I'm just saying they're, they're small and yeah, they're no, in the plan. So, yes, we can, we can do the certain things, but, you know, this was generated under certain assumptions, I'm sure, for, for whatever, at that point in time. And what we're dealing with is a program that we all sat here and discussed and went through and sort of agreed upon. So, no, 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 let me let me clarify. Okay. I did not agree upon this. I'm the one that's been saying, when do we start the major cuts? Okay, so just to be clear, and I, I didn't see anybody else say, oh yeah, no, let's go with 8,500 square feet. So l let me just be clear about that. Um, okay. You know, and, and again, we don't have a fitness room, and if that's 20 by 20, that's 400 square feet. Uh, in my mind, we've got what eight offices, eight full time chief, eight full time. You got eight full time. You might have ten, twelve, and twenty. Well, we also have special years and part time. We also have special and part time officers too. Right, but they're not all on all on all at the same time. Are you talking about cutting down the block rooms? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. You know, uh, the question that came up when we were doing the programming of the locker rooms was more about what's the proportion of men versus women that we might have in the future and we kind of cut the women's room down significantly from what it originally was but the men's room is somewhat driven by what you currently have for staff and what the potential minor increase that we planned I think there was very little increase mm -hmm. in the department over the lifetime of the building so the number of lockers that we're showing are pretty much what you would, would satisfy the force as it is. And so if we want to make that locker room smaller by cutting lockers, then we have to decide what do those people get? If it's a special and auxiliary, do they not get a locker? Do they only get a half a locker? Uh, those are things we can talk about. But I don't want to, to your earlier point, uh, somebody's earlier point about you know making sure the building is useful for the whole life of the department. I don't want to short change anything that you actually currently have and, and just in a matter of trying to squeeze the space out. Yeah. Well, I think then this is the balance, and this is what we were talking about probably just before you came in, um, is that we're going to have to have a certain number to sell on town meeting floor. Yeah. And if that number is too big, we're not going to get anything. Right. We won't get, even get a garage. Sure. No nothing. So there's our rock and our hard place and and I don't mean to be hard about a fitness room or anything else but you know when you make a presentation and and, and when we when we look at where we are in taxes uh, the, the real estate taxes um, and, and where it could potentially go I mean I want to see this taken out of capital stabilization so it doesn't affect the tax rate at all Mm -hmm. and, and we get the police station and that's a sure way to sell it and, but we also have to do the site work and, and tables and chairs and desks and, and I don't know wiring of, uh, of uh, computer stations mm -hmm. if that's not included in the 4, 450 mm -hmm. um, uh, you know all of that attendant uh, yeah. things have to be taken care of so mm -hmm. here we are uh, <laughs> So that's why. Yeah, it's a tough nut. You know, it, it was from the beginning. It's always been a tough nut to crack. And, and the, um, the difficulty is police station needs a certain amount of stuff just to function at a minimum. There are some things we can sort of trim along around the edges, and we have done most of that at this point. I think we're talking about a couple of things here. Not We're not talking about... to. Zell's earlier question, like, what are we going to cut? I don't see a whole lot we can cut. Can't cut the chief's office, can't cut some of these other things. There's, there are a few things we can potentially yes. look at, and, and that's really kind of up to the town. The, the big picture here is I'm not sure that we're going to push the square footage down to, like, 6,000 yeah. or 7,000 square feet. 6, so uh, in terms of the total project budget, it, 
even if we're cutting a little bit here, and I gr granted I agree with many people who said that you need to probably find as much savings as you can get, so any little bit is good, but we're not talking about a, we're going to take a million dollars out of the building. If, if, if you take it, if you take the put it in a basement, you're going to cut a thousand feet out easily. Well, it still costs money, obviously. Yeah. To build oh yeah, I know this is what money, but I'm saying the overall structure. It still saves us money because it's less per square foot to put a basement in. Right. So if we build stuff in the basement, you know, we're going to be building X number of square feet in the basement, and maybe that's going to be half the cost of yeah. what the first floor might be. Right. Uh, however, you might have to build more basement than you really need in terms of the actual program that you're putting down there. Let's say you put the garage down there, you put a lot of the boiler room, all the mechanicals, yeah. dead, dead storage. storage. Yeah. If you put all that space down there, maybe you get 1,200 square feet, 1,500 square feet. Yeah. But let's say we, in order to build it correctly, we've got to build a basement that's 3,000 square feet. So even though we're only paying technically half at the footage, but yeah. We're now we actually building twice as much as we really need, so we're actually pretty pretty much at a wash. Yeah. We haven't saved anything, um, but that's the next step for us to look at: is how big does that basement, basement have to yeah. be to kind of coincide with the grading? Cut in half. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if we could you, save some you money. Could put a slab, you, you, you could put a slab with it, with an evidence room and the cells are and, and to the right. Well, and we, take everything we, we on the we left. We don't even know if this, this outline of the building fits in the space. I mean, that's the whole point. We're a little, this, that's the next meeting. We yes. need to take mm -hmm. in right. what's there yeah. and start to sort of figure out how this can fit in. Yeah, conceptually, which is what I was trying to do, you know, I you think this we can do a basement, we can put some things in the basement. My gut feeling is that we're probably building, because we've done it before, you know, when you put a basement and you're probably going to build a bigger basement than you programmatically need to build. And even though it's cheaper space, you're building more of it, and so the amount of savings you get is a lot less than what you think you might have conceptually. So once we do that step, we can talk about it in more practical terms. But I, I, I wouldn't get uh, hung up on the fact that we might have a big <coughs> savings there yet. A couple of meetings ago, Harry came up with a plan of just shaving like a foot off, off of everything. Room. Yeah, right. Do we have that? Possibility. I think at the next, when we put this into a what's called billing information model and put it into a, a, a hard line computerized drafted plan, then we can take a look at how we can minimize the spaces a little bit less than the program. I'm not going to say it's a, exactly a footer space, but something less than what was originally programmed. Because right now these are just freehand sketches and they show furniture loosely, but once we do the computer drawings, we'll actually be able to show the correct actual furniture sizes, the equipment sizes, so that when we take that foot out, we know we actually have it to spare. Because the last thing I want to do is give you a plan that ultimately you can't fit the office furniture in the office. Yeah, yeah. this building is just going to be fine, don't worry about it. So I think, yes, that, that can be part of the next step. And, uh, and, and also part of the next step is to, to talk to the engineers a little bit about the space requirements that they may need. So the sizes for the boiler room, electric room, you know, other things, depending on the mechanical system we might need, we may have to massage the plan a little bit to fit their stuff in there in, in a basic way. I mean, they're not going to actually design their systems yet, but we need to make sure that the rooms are at least big enough to have their equipment. So even though we're showing a boiler room of a certain size, Maybe that's too small, or maybe that's too big, depending on the equipment they want to bring in. Are we looking at a boiler room, or are we looking at HVAC on the roof? Most likely, we're going to have at least a hot water heater um, for the for the showers. Uh, we may, I don't know what the engineers are going to want to select for this building, but it may be an all air system. Uh, but at least the, even in an all air system, you're going to need a, a boiler to run the, the heating loop through that. So I mean, I'm, sure, I'm assuming there'll be a wall hung, condensing, you know, very efficient boiler in that room. So it won't be a giant furnace. But so it'll probably be some wall, uh, some, some rooftop units, whether they're in the roof or in a truss system or whatever. There, there'll be some package units that will do an air system for the building. And remind me what the um, ground storage. Uh, the snow below rakes, shovels, uh, gas can. So 
it's, all that it's extra, a tiny room, but all know. the extra maintenance materials that you need, the salt, the package of salt that you put on the pavement. Do we do we have that, that or is that? Well, well, it's all, but it's all in this building right now, so I mean, okay. you're not gonna, <clears throat> the other thing is, is if we end up doing something underneath. That could go there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Things like that are sort of like uh, whatever. Because yeah. There's probably going to, to your point, there's probably going to be extra room. Yes. Yeah. Farm, I'd rather spend uh, less money building that space in a basement than putting it on the first floor where it's a more valuable yeah. square foot. Um, as long as, you know, the total makes project sense. envelope mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we have to do a basement, it makes sense to put that type of a space down there. Just looking at, looking at this revised plan, the only thing I think we could really cut is the fitness room and maybe a sliver, which is like 75 feet, 60 feet off the locker room. I don't really see anything else we can reduce the overall I mean, you space. You might something when you start putting it in about the offices and things like that. I know I keep saying that because I live in these offices. And, you know. But in, term, but it's, in it's terms of like, huge. yeah, we're it, talking about that's it's, that's it's nickel dime. Down. I'm talking about chunks that yeah. you know get this eight thousand number. I, don't, I really don't see it going below seventy five hundred. Like I said before, it's just a matter of is that seventy five hundred all on one floor or is it broken up into two? Mm -hmm. I just I don't you know, getting rid of the fitness room four hundred square feet and you're at seventy six. What else are we really gonna say is not in the station? I get saying things go down to the basement, garage, mechanicals, but we're still paying for those square feet. It may not be you know, the full 450, but it's going to be you know, 350, 400. Sure. So, okay. yeah, I don't think. And that's about 1,000 square feet more than what the mod space was. That mod space drawing with Sally Port was 6,500 and mm -hmm. change. Yep. So then at 7,500, we're about 1,000 square feet more. Do you want to weigh in on that, Chief? Uh, I, we've talked about the fit room, fitness room at every meeting, so yeah. I think we ought to like to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've done enough talking. We should probably make a decision. I think the fact of the matter is, if the if the fitness room is going to save us the square footage, and we are going to find uh, some basement space, we might be able to store the weights in the basement. Well, if we had a basement, I would suggest potentially that the fitness room go in the basement, and so it wouldn't necessarily just get tossed. But if we had to be, build a basement space that was a certain size and there was extra space in it, just put it down there. Yeah. If you were to ask me uh, if I lost the fitness room, I'd get the rest of the building, I'd say go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to give it up, but if this project hinges on us having a fitness room or not, then, then it goes. My other question is, is let's say, let's say we, I mean, the fitness room seems like it's low-hanging fruit for, mm -hmm. you know, somebody to come up and say, why are they getting the fitness room? Mm -hmm. And, you know, sour their whole perspective of the building. When we, if we do a two-floor station and we figure out what basement we need, does it make sense to build a slightly larger basement for, you know, general storage that could one day through other means of funding become a fitness room? Is that something that people have it's done in the past? It's certainly a, a potential possibility. I'd reserve some judgment until you actually see yeah, the no, next iteration curious. because, um, as I said at the be beginning of the discussion on the basement space, it depends on how much you're bi building, right? If you're building the entire footprint as a basement, well, yeah. you know, you're still <laughs> building a lot of square feet down there and, and it's not like we're gonna get too much out of the first floor to go down there in the first place. So even if we had a 6,000, 6,500 square foot first floor plate, we don't necessarily want to build a 13,000 square foot building, even though half of it's in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a portion of the first floor should be slab on grid, and it's so just a question of where we draw the line. And I think the appropriate time to talk about that is once you have some drawings in front of you and we can actually talk about details about it. But I, I, agree, I agree with your point. You know, looking down the road and deciding, you know, do you build an extra 200 square feet in the basement because you might need it in the future, it's probably a wise, at least it's not too expensive to do. Yeah, it buys you flexibility. Right. I guess one of the one other thing that just sort of occurs, and it's again, it's not something we'll do design around, but I guess just as you're doing this and thinking about it, you know, we, we took out one of the, the third cell Mm -hmm. um, based on Chief's input and all that, you know, 
even looking at, at this conceptual drawing, it would seem feasible in 20 years if you could add two more cells onto the building, you know, in that sort of way. So I guess. Yeah, that's convenient, that, isn't it? That sort of. <laughs> yeah, did you think that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Zell was thinking that, but I thought that after our last discussion is that if in the future they had to add cells, there's a way to do it without right, killing so, ourselves, uh, locking you into it. Right, so, so that sort of thinking is, would be greatly appreciated. It is greatly appreciated. Yeah. You know, because it, it, we're, we're, where we're making conscious decisions to limit something in order to help with cost and or square footage, to know that there is an out for that that isn't a you know, massive redo of the station in 20 or 25 years is a good thing. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. Okay, do we have anything else that we need to accomplish tonight? Uh, I, no, I think, you know, my, what I've heard, at least so far, and then we'll do for the next go around is we will look at the site plans that have been given to us so far. Uh, I think they're good enough for us to get started on doing a site layout, so the next time we'll bring some site plan layouts as well as a study of a building with a basement. And, uh, and then potentially a building with a single story on the same site. So how does it work with a one-story building? How does it work with a basement building? And, uh, and internal plans of those buildings so that you can see how they come together. They'll have square footage on it. And at least for the one story, we will assume no fitness room. But for the one with the basement, we'll assume the fitness room is in the basement. And then at that meeting, we can discuss the extent of the basement uh, and that option. With, with a basement, John, you also have the, the availability. If you want another cell or two cells, you can do it. No, you don't. Yeah. You, you, you can steal one of those rooms. No, you don't really. Not, not to fit the. Yeah. No, you don't have it. You don't have to take the first note. It's probably be just as easy to. Put a small bump out on and come off the detention area in the same way you do with the cells there. <laughs> but again, this is just yeah. a schematic. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's the issue given a lot of the rules about what we can use the basement for without yeah. getting yeah. the elevator. Yeah. But right now, I think we've got the cells that are needed. Yeah. Uh, like yeah, but what I'm saying, John, with the basement. <laughs> That means you can add on if you want, and you still got a way to get to your pipes just and do it in a slab. He's got the big one over there. So like part of the thought process. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. uh, do we want to set a next meeting date? Yes. Because um, the next time we're available and potentially scheduled to meet would be Wednesday the 22nd. That's the Wednesday before Christmas. Um, however, I have another meeting scheduled for that same date right now, and I was wondering mm -hmm. if we could do it on the 21st. The, I think we the had, Tuesday. I think 20th. we were planning on the 20th. 14th, huh? Yes. Because um, we had that one week hiccup because of the word Thanksgiving. I though. can't do the 14th. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, well, can we get some plans and talk about some of the idea? You can have Zell if you want, <laughs> without me, but that, that's, that's fine. I, I wouldn't be able to make it. Um, Otherwise, my next available is the Tuesday of the 20th. Um, I know it's not a Wednesday, but... Based on what we have, <coughs> currently with this plot, we've been contemplating the design plan for a lot of... Or are you still anticipating us getting extra acreage? We're going to deal with whatever you give us. Yeah. Yeah, I think right now we have to so, assume that this is all we're going to have. Yeah. yeah. I, I hadn't assumed there'd be anything more than what this yeah. show. For the yeah. If you were to say, oh, by the way, we've also got this other piece of property, then we'll modify it. But I think at this point, we'll just go with what we've got. Yeah. And looking at this, we don't have a lot of space. Yeah. Um, from the we know where it's going to yeah. be. And we can hang it over. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Like the supermarket on the place. <laughs> okay, so the option is the 20th? Right. I mean, you can do the 14th, and it would just be Zell here. It would be a little tight to turn us around by the 14th for yeah, us, but I'd, I'd recommend the 20th. Yeah, I'd rather do the 20th. Wait six days and get much more information than 
Okay, the 20th is 20th. a Tuesday. Can people make it Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? Yeah. Um, will we get water health that night? No. 20th? No. no. Uh, we, we're on uh, 13 and 27. Yeah, that, that would be the third Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So it's <coughs> off schedule on the 20th. Yeah. That works, everybody. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you very much. All righty. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Yeah. All right. Thank you.